Bail law is in headlines once again. The government should consider introducing a new bail law. The Apex Court suggested the central government to introduce a new bail law. Prime Minister Modi unveiled the national emblem cast on the roof of the new parliament building. New parliament building is being constructed under the central Vista project. Line Capital was adopted as the state emblem of India on January 26, 1950. Trade eased amid restrictions. RBI announced to set up rupee settlement system. Now, trade can be carried out in local currency. Red Panda Augmentation Program launched. It aims at naturally increasing the population of red pandas in forests. Main habitat of red pandas is the eastern Himalayas and the southwest region of China. Global Gender Gap Report 2022 released Iceland, Finland and Norway ranked first, second and third respectively. India's position is the worst in terms of women's health and survival. Recently, the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Law and Justice constituted under the chairmanship of Sushil Kumar Modi has recommended amendments to the Mediation Bill. Notably, Mediation Bill was meant for institutionalization of mediation and establishment of the Mediation Council of India. The committee stated that making pre-litigation mediation mandatory will delay the disposal of cases, it may prove to be an additional tool in the hands of truant litigants. It recommended that the pre-litigation mediation should be made optional, that is, offered as an option only to those who are willing to mediate. It also recommended that the bill should be implemented in a phased manner. The committee has warned the central government against the powers granted to the higher courts to frame mediation rules. Clause 26 of the bill empowers the Supreme Court or the High Court to make rules for the court-annexed mediation. The committee has termed Clause 26 as unconstitutional. It also recommended that specific provisions should be made in place of the existing provision of Clause 26. Furthermore, the committee has also made recommendations regarding the qualification and appointment of the chairman and members of the proposed Mediation Council. It states that the chairman and members of the council should have sufficient knowledge and experience in mediation. According to present provisions of the bill, people dealing with problems relating to Alternative dispute resolution can become members and chairman of the council. Appointment of the chairman and the members of the proposed council by a selection committee constituted by the central government is also recommended. The committee also recommended that mediation councils should be instituted in the state at 12. These state mediation councils should function under the overall superintendence, direction and control of the Mediation Council of India. Recently. The Supreme Court has asked the central government to consider introducing a separate bail law on the lines of the Bail Law of the United Kingdom. The court further stated that the CRPC, that is, Code of Criminal Procedure as it exists today, is a continuation of the pre-independence one with some modifications. The data shows that the conviction rate in criminal cases in India is very low. There are a large number of under-trial prisoners in Indian jails. Significantly, about two-thirds of the prisoners are under trials. In this context, the court stated that liberty is enshrined in the law and must be protected. Holding under-trial prisoners in jails for a long time is a violation of their fundamental rights. The Supreme Court underlined that arrest is a draconian measure that needs to be used sparingly. The CRPC was first formulated in 1882 and it continues to be used even today with some amendments made it from time to time. CRPC doesn't define the term bail. It only categorizes offenses under the Indian Penal Code as bailable and non-bailable. CRPC empowers magistrates to grant bail for bailable offenses as a matter of right. Non-bailable offenses are cognizable which enable the police officer to arrest without a warrant. In such cases, a magistrate would determine 
if the accused is fit to be arresting any person for any offence, punishable with imprisonment up to seven years. The United Kingdom's Bail Act 1976 lays down the procedure for granting bail. It aims at reducing the size of the inmate population. This law also contains provisions to ensure legal aid to the defendants. Recently, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has released the draft Drug, Medical Devices and Cosmetic Bills 2022. Under this bill, e-pharmacy and medical devices will be regulated for the first time in India. The bill defines medical devices separately. The definition of a medical device includes clinical equipment, its software, implants, devices for assistance with disabilities, life support, Equipment Act regulated the medical devices as a category of drugs. The proposed bill provides for the continuation of a medical device technical advisory board along the lines of the existing drug technical advisory board. This board will consist of medical professionals and individuals having technical knowledge of medical equipments. So far, decisions regarding medical devices are taken by the Drugs Technical Advisory Board. The draft bill provides for medical devices testing centers on the lines of drug laboratories at the central and state levels. In addition, it also provides for the establishment of a central licensing authority. This authority will grant permission for carrying out clinical examinations or testing of medical devices. Currently, companies have to take permission from the Apex drug regulator to conduct these tests. In the draft bill, it is mandatory to take permission for running an e-pharmacy. The proposed bill has a separate chapter for Ayush drugs. It has been proposed to regularize SOA Rikpa and homeopathy for the first time. The Indian medical sector is a rapidly growing industry. It is expected to have a turnover of $280 billion by 2025. The Indian medical device market is one of the top 20 major markets in the world. The current value of the Indian medical device market is approximately $5.2 billion, which is likely to touch $50 billion by 2025. Recently, a meeting was convened by the Hasi Hills Autonomous District Council of Meghalaya. The meeting was convened to reconsider the instrument of accession that made Khasi Domain a part of the Union of India. The chief executive member of the council has also given his consent in this regard. The need to revisit the instrument of accession and annexed agreement was felt as many provisions are missing from the sixth schedule of the constitution. Khasi Domain was merged with India after talks held between 1947 and 1948. This conditional treaty was signed by the then Governor General of India, Chakravarti Rajagopalachari, on 17th August 1948. Actually, Khasi Inheritance of Property Bill 2021 was introduced last year. It was seen as a violation of the social and cultural customs of the Khasi people by some of the council leaders. The bill provides for equitable distribution of ancestral property among brothers and sisters in the Khasi community. In this context, the council says that the provisions can be added to the sixth schedule of the constitution and only the parliament has the powers to amend this schedule. At the same time, they believe that they have not got enough judicial power in civil and criminal matters. The council is also of the view that it should be granted more judicial powers. The Khasi Hill Autonomous District Council is a body under the sixth schedule of the constitution. This schedule provides for the administration of tribal areas to protect the rights of the tribal population in the states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. Under this, a total of 10 autonomous district councils have been established. This special provision has been made under Article 244 and Article 275 of the Constitution. Thus, the sixth schedule provides autonomy in the administration of these areas through the Autonomous District Council. Khasi, Garo and Jaintia are some of the prominent indigenous tribes of Meghalaya. Recently, the Prime Minister unveiled the national emblem cast on the roof of the new parliament building. The national emblem is derived from the lion capital perched atop the Ashoka pillar. This emblem is made of bronze and 
it weighs 9500 kg it has the height of 6.5 meters a steel structure weighing about 6500 kg has been built around the emblem to support it a new parliament building is being constructed under the central vista project this building will be in the shape of a triangle its interiors will have three main foundation stones of the new parliament building with the state of the art facilities in december 2020 the profile of the lion capital was adopted as the state emblem of india on january 26 1950 it is considered as the biggest symbol of governance culture and peace actually sarnath is the location where buddha delivered his first sermon after attaining enlightenment therefore emperor ashoka built the ashoka pillar in the 3rd century bc in sarnath the four lions present in the ashokan pillar are considered as symbols of pride confidence determination and strength the chakra present in the ashoka pillar is considered as a symbol of justice and energy it is also a symbol of the continuous progress of the newly liberated country a bull horse and elephant are also present at the bottom of the ashoka pillar which are symbols of indian diversity agricultural culture and valor recently the archaeological survey of india has started the work of conserving an ancient buddhist site located in karnataka the estimated cost of this project is about 4 crores the buddhist site is situated on the banks of bhima river in sannati and kannagana halli villages of kalaburgi district of karnataka sannati and kannagana halli were small and ordinary villages a kali temple existed in sannati village till the year 1986 the kali temple's wall collapsed and while clearing its debris ashokan edicts were found in the temple's foundation a mahastupa was also found during the excavations carried out in the kannagana halli village it was referred to as adhuloka mahachaitya or the great stupa of the netherworlds in the inscriptions besides a stone painting of emperor ashoka surrounded by his queens and female attendants was also found the lower part of this stone painting had raya ashoka inscribed in the brahmi script it is believed that the excavated mahastupa is the largest stupa of its time and the stone painting is the only surviving image of the maurya emperor surveyors believe that the mahastupa is believed to have been developed in three constructional phases namely maurya early satvahana and later satvahana periods stretching from 3rd century bc to 3rd century ad this stupa was later destroyed in an earthquake the excavation work of this site was done by asi from 1994 to 2001 however efforts were not made to conserve the excavated objects in the ongoing conservation plan the remains of the mahastupa recovered during the excavation will be restored in their original place without any ornamentation recently the reserve bank of india has announced to set up international trade settlement mechanism in indian rupee it is aimed at trading in the local currency with the country concerned it also aims to mitigate the impact of trade sanctions and establish an alternative payment system for international trade payments furthermore it is aimed at supporting and facilitating the growing interest of the global trade community in the indian rupee authorized dealer banks will have to open rupee vos through accounts in india for utilizing this system authorized dealer banks are those banks which are authorized for carrying out financial transactions related to foreign trade besides these banks also are required to take permission from the central office of the foreign exchange department of rbi mumbai then the indian importer will have to deposit the value of goods or services in the vos through account of the country concerned a vos through account is an account a correspondent bank holds on behalf of another bank for example HSBC vos through account is operated by SBI in India according to the RBI under this system the determination of the exchange rate of currency between the trading partner countries and India will be market based furthermore indian traders can also get advance payment for exports through this system RBI has directed that 
Indian banks will have to ensure that funds available in these accounts are used for payment obligations related to order already exported before allowing advance payments of exports. Experts are of the view that this system will aid in trading with Russia and Iran. It will also be easier to maintain foreign exchange reserves and prevent the rupee's value from declining. Recently, WEF, that is World Economic Forum, has released the Global Gender Gap Report 2022. This report presents disappointing statistics for India. According to the report, India is ranked at 135 out of 146 countries with a score of 0.629. Iceland, Finland and Norway are ranked first, second and third respectively. Among the neighbouring countries, India's performance remains worst except for Pakistan and Afghanistan, while Bangladesh has topped in terms of the better status of women. Significantly, India ranked 112th out of 153 countries in 2020 and 140th out of 156 countries in 2021. According to the report, India is at the last position, that is, 146th in terms of health and survival, whereas India is in the best position in terms of political empowerment, which is one of the four dimensions of the report. The report also mentions that it will take about 132 years for the world to reach gender parity, while the South Asian countries will take about 197 years for achieving the same. The Global Gender Gap Index is based on four dimensions, which include economic participation and opportunity, educational attainment, health and survival, and political empowerment. Countries are ranked on the basis of these dimensions. In this index, one is the highest score indicating a state of equality, while a zero score indicates a state of complete inequality. This index benchmarks the current state and evolution of gender parity across the four key dimensions mentioned above. Recently, researchers have discovered a new species of the evergreen tree in Thiruvanthananpuram district of Kerala. It belongs to the Miliosa genus. Significantly, this new species has been discovered in the Agastyamala Biosphere Reserve located in the Western Ghats of Kerala. Hence, it has been named Miliosa Agastya Malana. The identification of the new species has taken the total number of species of Miliosa found in India to 25. However, only two mature trees have been spotted so far in its natural habitat. Researchers have stated that this new species is very similar to Miliosa Pathala Maliana and Miliosa Vaitiana, but detailed studies revealed that it is to be distinct from all the others hitherto. This newly discovered species has brown bark and solitary flowers, which are yellowish pink in color. Flowering and fruiting occur during April to July. They grow at a height of about 6 to 9 meters and have drooping branches. It is worth noting that the evergreen forest of the southern western Ghats are home to numerous endemic species, including seven species of Miliusa. The researchers came across the new Miliusa species at about 1200 meters. Recently, Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park program aims to increase the population of red pandas naturally in the forest. The Himalayan Zoological Park will release 20 of these endangered red pandas into the wild for about five years. Notably, this is the first of its kind program in India. It is worth mentioning that the red panda is a mammal. It is mainly found in the eastern Himalayas and the southwest region of China. In India, it is mainly found in Sikkim, Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh, West Bengal, etc. Both Elurus fulgens, that is Himalayan red panda, and Elurus fulgens stiani, that is Chinese red panda, are found in India. The Siang River in Arunachal Pradesh divides the territory of Himalayan and Chinese red panda. The red panda enjoys legal protection under Schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972. It has been classified as endangered under the IUCN Red List. The red panda is the state animal of Sikkim. It is to be noted that Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park is located in Darjeeling, West Bengal. It is home to a variety of animals. It is authorized for the conservation and breeding program of red pandas, snow leopards, 
Tibetan wolves and other endangered animal species of the eastern Himalayas. It is one of the highest altitude zoos in India and is situated at a height of about 2000 meters. It is also known as the Darjeeling Zoo. This zoo is known for its breeding and conservation programs. This zoo started a breeding program to conserve the red pandas in the 1990s. Recently, a three-day Akhil Bharatiya Shiksha Samagam was organized in Varanasi. In this Samagam, various stakeholders deliberated upon the changing scenario of higher education and the diverse approach of NEP, that is National Education Policy 2020, furthermore best practices and ideas to take forward, various aspects of education reforms guided by NEP 2020 were also shared. More than 300 academic, administrative and institutional representatives participated in this program. The Samagam had a total of 11 sessions, out of which 9 sessions were based on the program's theme and two special sessions were based on sharing success stories and brainstorming. Notably, a committee was constituted under the chairmanship of Dr. K. Kasturi Ranjan, the former ISRO chief in June 2017. This committee presented the draft national education policy in May 2019. NEP was implemented in 2020 based on the recommendation of the committee. It focuses mainly on the issues like accessibility, quality, quality, affordable education and accountability of education. Education is a subject of the concurrent list. However, it was under the state list before 1976. Through the 42nd Constitutional Amendment of 1976, education was moved to the concurrent list. It must be noted that both the central and state governments can make laws on the subject included in the concurrent list. Recently, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States published a report. This report has revealed shocking figures for India. The report mentions that about 70% of Indians cannot afford nutritious food. If we look at the population pattern of India, then the condition of children is quite worrying. According to the report, India ranked first among neighboring countries in terms of lack of nutritious food for children in 2020, while it was second only to Pakistan in terms of child stunting. It is worth noting that if a child doesn't grow with the increase in his or her age, then it is called child stunting. Apart from this, in the case of breastfeeding of children below 5 months, this figure was satisfactory with 58% in the year 2020. However, it still remains a matter of concern. About 53% of adult Indian women are suffering from anemia. With this, India is in the worst position among its neighbouring countries. Significantly, anemia is the leading cause of poor health and death of women in India. As per the report, the world was affected by the pandemic in the recent past and measures are now needed to reduce its impact. In the case of India, providing nutritious food is a big issue along with its access to the weaker section. For this purpose, strict laws need to be made and implemented in India. Let us tell you that hunger, food insecurity and malnutrition are the major topics in the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations and this organization publishes report based on the steps taken by various countries towards achieving these goals and the achievements made in this direction. Let us now look at the five questions based on the bulletin. Questions for this series are, first question is, consider the following statements. 1. Banks authorized for carrying out foreign trade related financial transactions are called authorized dealers. 2. Under the rupee settlement system, exchange rate of currency between the trading partner countries and India will be determined on the basis of market. 3. The main objective of the rupee settlement system is to trade with the country concerned in the local currency. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1, 2 and 3, 2 only, 1 and 2 only or 1 and 3 only. Next question is, consider the following statements. 1. The Ashokan pillar has only 3 animals engraved on it. 2. The Ashokan pillar was constitutionally adopted as a state emblem on 15th August 1947. 3. The Ashokan pillar installed on the new parliament building is made of a mixture of copper and tin. 
which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 2 and 3 only, 3 only, 1 and 3 only or 1 and 2 only. Next question is, consider the following statements. 1. The Buddhist Mahastupa was found during an excavation in Kanganahalli village. 2. The Buddhist Mahastupa found during the excavation has been described in the inscriptions as Adholoka Mahachatya. 3. Sarnati and Kanganahalli are the villages located in Tamil Nadu. Which of the above statement or statements is or are incorrect? 2 and 3 only, 3 only, 2 only or all of the above. Next question is, consider the following statements. 1. According to a report of the United Nations for 2020, India's performance was worst among neighboring countries in terms of lack of nutritious food for children. 2. If a child does not grow with the increase in his or her age, then it is called child stunting. 3. According to the recently released United Nations report, about 70% Indians cannot afford nutritious food. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1 only, 1 and 3 only, 2 and 3 only or all of the above. Last question is, consider the following statements. 1. The Global Gender Gap Report is released by the World Economic Forum. 2. India has ranked 135th out of 146 countries in the Global Gender Gap Report 2022. 3. In the Global Gender Gap Report 2022, Iceland ranked 1st and Norway ranked 3rd. Which of the above statement or statements is or are incorrect? 2 only, 1 and 2 only, 2 and 3 only or none of the above. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the Natural Farming Conclave. This conference was organized in Surat, Gujarat. Thousands of farmers and other stakeholders who have successfully adopted natural farming in Surat participated in this conference. Natural farming is a traditional indigenous farming method based on livestock. No chemical fertilizers or pesticides are used in natural farming. After opening up the space sector, more than 60 startups have registered with ISRO. Recently, the Union Minister of State for Science and Technology has informed about the opening up of the space sector. Some of the registered startups are working on projects related to space debris management, while other startups are working on areas like nano satellites, launch vehicles, ground systems, and research, etc. Recently, the Lok Sabha Secretariat has prepared a list of unparliamentary words 2021. It contains a collection of words whose use in parliament would be considered unparliamentary. Under this list, various words and phrases like Jumla Jivi, Lollipop, Gadar, Crocodile Tears, Jaychand, Shakuni and Corrupt have been banned. These words included in this list will not be included in the proceedings of the House. However, the Speaker or the Chairman will have the final right to remove words from the proceedings of the House. Recently, former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was shot dead. Abe was shot in the Japanese city of Nara while campaigning for the upper house elections. Shinzo Abe was the longest time serving Prime Minister of Japan. He is credited with strengthening India's ties with Japan. He visited India three times during his tenure. He was awarded the Padma Vibhushan Award, its second highest civilian honor by the Government of India in 2021. Recently, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson resigned from his post. He had to resign from his post due to the distrust of the party leaders. Indian origin British MP Rishi Sunak is leading the race for the post of UK Prime Minister since Johnson's resignation. He has secured the most votes in the first round of voting for the post of Prime Minister. His parents are of Indian origin. Recently, India's first Animal Health Summit was organized in Delhi. It was organized by the Indian Chamber of Food and Agriculture and Agriculture Today Group. This summit was organized for ensuring better health for the animals. On the occasion of India's 75th Independence Day, the central government will launch the Har Ghar Tiranga national campaign across the country. This campaign will be launched by the Ministry of Culture under the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Under this campaign, Indians will be motivated to hoist the tricolor in their homes. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav is an initiative of the Government of India to celebrate the 75 years of progressive, independent India and to remember the freedom fighters. 
National Product Corporation Limited organized an awareness program on the dangers of tobacco use. This program was organized in collaboration with Homi Bhabha Cancer Hospital and Research Center Vishakhapatnam. This program aims at making people aware of the dangers of tobacco use. It also aimed at promoting a tobacco-free society. This program was celebrated as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav in line with WHO's No Tobacco campaign.